Welcome back everyone. Today is ETF day. Today I'll be going through and buying some of my favorite ETFs for my new ISA on Trading212. If you've never seen me before, I started a new ISA yesterday on Trading212 after a couple of messy months of investing. Like many new investors, I poked and prodded around without a strategy and I paid the price. I now have a really messy portfolio and I'm trying to neaten it out with this new ISA. Today is all about exchange traded funds. Now you'll have to bear with me on this one today because ETFs do sound much more complicated than they actually are. ETFs are simply funds that track indexes. Now indexes are groups of stocks that are bundled together by investment companies to make life easier for investors rather than tracking individual stocks. Basically, rather than buying say Apple and Google individually, you can pile them all together with loads of other technology companies in one ETF. It just makes life a little bit easier for the investor and it has some added bonuses like if one company starts to lag behind, the algorithm in the index just chops it right off. That reduces your exposure to shitty companies. The main advantage of ETFs is they trade like a stock so you can buy and sell them whenever. That is about as simple as I can make ETFs. I mean it is a little bit more complicated than that and there are downsides. But that right there is all you really need to know. So today I'll be looking through and buying the ETFs that I want to put into my portfolio. I've got to admit, it's not a brilliant day to start. All of the markets have seen two days of consecutive growth of about 3%. This bounce back is due to increased optimism that the coronavirus is starting to subside in Europe. And also the American government has a very strong opinion about getting the economy started as soon as possible. So that's got investors a little bit tingly this week and they've started buying back in. My personal guess is that the downturn isn't quite over, but this is a significant pullback to the crash. As in, I don't think it's gonna go considerably lower, but this isn't also a massive scale to the top. I think investors are buying back in because we've now got a really good idea of how much damage is going to be done to the economy. We've got a good idea of how long shops are going to be shut and also what companies are going to be damaged by this. However, I think there might be a second mini drop in a couple of months. I think this is because while most investors are prepared for a long-term shutdown, some aren't and they've got a bit emotional and they don't want to miss the boat. In a month or two, the US and UK governments will likely announce an extra 30 days of lockdown. At this point, I can see investors getting a bit fearful again and there will be a mini mini drop. But I will say, I think most investors right now have priced in a really long-term shutdown of maybe over a year which is why I don't think we'll see another massive 30% drop. But that's just my opinion, it's where I think things are going to go and that's what I'm going to set my plan against. Bottom line though, cost averaging. Just trickle that money in and get some average gains. That's what I'm doing today with my ETFs. Today with my ETFs, I'm just going to buy the minimum amount of everything. And then over the next few months, I'll slowly add to everything. Starting off with the Vanguards, first one is the FTSE 100 or VUKE, V-U-K-E. Trading 212 doesn't have any ETF details on it, so I'm having to go to Bloomberg for this one. But as usual, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to tell you the outlier of why I like it, and then you can decide whether you want to go for it as well. The Vanguard FTSE 100 index is very simple. It tracks the top 100 companies in the UK. It pays out a 5% dividend over the year, and it pays that quarterly. This is your simplest UK ETF and it's really popular. So we go in here, have a look, we'll see how many we can buy. One, review order and buy. And that's my FTSE 100 order bought. My next favorite is the Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend. It does exactly what it says on the tin. The dividend is 4.19% and it pays it quarterly. The reason I've chosen this one is it's all world. It exposes you to every single market in the world and it's great for diversification. So if you're holding stocks in all of the world, you've got a really good chance of growing with the entire world. Let's make a buy on that one. So buy, units one, 35 quid, send buy, and we are done. Excellent. My next favorite is the Vanguard Emerging Markets. Not doing as well as the others today. I'm not sure why. Emerging Markets isn't going to take up a high percentage of my ETFs, but I do want a bit of exposure to there because emerging markets are what they are. They are constantly growing. It's great for diversification and you don't really want to miss out on growth of all the emerging markets. Its dividend yield is 3% and it's paid quarterly. It is quite an expensive one, so don't expect me to buy lots of shares in it, but I'm just going to buy one and see how it goes. And the last of the Vanguard funds is the S&P 500. Now this is a classic, I think 
everybody fucking owns it. The dividend yield isn't particularly high at 1.82%, but you simply cannot go through investing life without exposing yourself to the American market. Again, expensive for what it is, but it's just one I can't not have. The Vanguard S&P 500 isn't going to make up a big part of my ETF portfolio. This is because I've got another ETF that I really like. The Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility is one of my favorite ETFs. Ticker symbol is HDLG. It has a 5% dividend yield, which is nice and high, but the way the algorithm works is really cool. So what it does is it picks the 75 top dividend paying companies in the S&P 500. Out of those 75, it then picks 50 companies that over the years has experienced low volatility. By that, it means that the algorithm isn't picking companies that have had share prices going up and down all the time. It picks solid companies that share prices grow very gradually over a long period of time. It obviously mixes this healthy rate of growth with high dividend paying companies. And in theory, you should get the creme de la creme of dividend investment companies in America. That's why it's my favorite, and that's why I'm going to buy more of it than any other ETF in my portfolio. But for today, and for cost averaging purposes, I'm buying one. My last three ETFs are my iShares ETFs. They're in little mini sectors that I think might grow over time. I'm not gonna go in too deep into them, but I'll just show you that I'm buying them. First up is the iShares Global Clean Energy. It's as simple as that. It invests in clean energy and it's got a good dividend. Next up is Global Water. I don't know why, I just can't see the world living it without water. Might as well invest in it. Yeah, honestly, that is probably about as much research as I've done into that one. So please look for yourself. And finally, quite a cool one is the iShares European Property. This one's got a dividend of over 4% and simply invest in REITs all over Europe. I'm quite cool with that one because I'm not very good with REITs in Europe and this ETF will nicely expose me to everything in that market. Short term, it doesn't look good because most of Europe is just retail, but long term, it should recover well. So there's all my ETFs bought for today. My aim is not to have more than 25% of my entire portfolio in ETFs. I do feel that I need to expose myself to more and create a lot more diversity in my portfolio. 25% in ETFs should do that. It's worth noting right here that ETFs can also cut their dividends. The dividend isn't guaranteed, so you just need to be aware of that. I'm always on the lookout for new ETFs, so if you guys have got anything that I need to look at, let me know in the comments below. As for this week, I'm all done. I'm going to do a little bit of cost averaging forward, and then next week, I'm going big on REITs. If you're thinking about getting into investing and using Trading212 as your platform, you can use my link in the description below. If you sign up through that, we both get a free share. And if you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and invest.